गुड मॉर्निंग डे स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक आई एम योर फिजिक्स प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर नागराज एक्सप्लेनिंग इंजीनियरिंग फिजिक्स फॉर कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड अलाइड ब्रांचेस इट इज अ वी टी यू प्रिस्क्राइब सिलेबस राइट नो आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट सुपर कंडक्टर्स दिस इज अ सेकेंड वीडियो ऑन सुपर कंडक्टर्स इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो आई जस्ट गेव यू द डेफिनेशन ऑफ सुपर कंडक्टिविटी हिस्टोरिकल डेवलपमेंट्स ऑफ सुपर कंडक्टिविटी एंड समथिंग अबाउट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ पोन ऑन एंड देन मैथिसन रोल दट इज इफेक्ट ऑफ टेम्परेचर ऑन द रेजिस्टिविटी कम लेट एस प्रोसीड फॉर द बिफोर आई गो अड लेट मी रिक that graph when you plot the resistance versus uh, temperature or resistivity versus temperature uh the this uh, kemerling one has noticed that resistivity suddenly dropped to zero at 4.15 kelvin in the case of mercury that is zero resistance state of the substance is known as superconductivity and the substance exhibiting this property is known as superconductor now let us see some properties of superconductors first of all this is called critical temperature this is critical temperature it varies from material to material okay now superconductors have zero resistivity means zero resistance in puc you have studied whenever there is resistance in the circuit current decreases for example i have a circuit like this right in order to drive charges through the resistor i need to connect this to a battery so source of emf is required in order to overcome the opposition otherwise charges cannot flow at all got it and as long as there is battery there will be current in the circuit and that current is equal to emf divided by R that is V divided by ohms. Lah, that's all. So current established in the circuit because of the battery. Why current cannot be there in the circuit without battery because of resistance? Why charges cannot flow in the circuit because of resistance? Understood? Now instead of taking ordinary conductor, ordinary resistor, do one thing. Take a superconducting wire, a wire made up of aluminium, for example. Just in my previous video, I told you aluminium. it becomes superconductor at around 1.15 kelvin so i have a piece of aluminium wire connect this aluminium wire to a battery right what happens current starts flowing in the circuit current keeps on flowing right now do one thing reduce the temperature of the aluminium below 1.15 kelvin so what happens aluminium converts into superconductor at normal temperature aluminium is a normal conductor when you temp reduce the temperature below critical value it becomes superconductor okay now my aluminum wire is at 1.15 kelvin temperature anna kadime maadidini now it is superconductor so do one thing short these two ends connect these two ends and now remove the battery take off this battery you know what will happen so there is no battery in the circuit now the question whether current stops current comes to zero or continues to flow answer current continues to flow don't you think it is a very surprising result yes because we know whenever there is resistance a battery is required in order to drive the current so current flows only in the presence of of battery but here in the absence of battery also current is flowing why because below 1.15 kelvin aluminum is a superconductor its resistivity is zero resistance is zero therefore charges do not face any opposition at all so therefore charges continues to flow now the question how long they flow means how long that current exist in the wire will it exist for just a fraction of second and current is to to flow agutte is it only for 1 second or 2 second or 1 hour 2 hour or 1 day or 2 day believe it or not it continues to flow forever because there is no opposition at all only one thing you have to maintain the temperature below 1.15 kelvin what i mean to say once you set up the current in the superconducting wire it continues to flow forever at such a type of current is known as a persistent current please remember persistent current is a exclusive property of superconductor so because there is no resistivity current can flow forever this is one property zero resistivity is one property persistent current existence of current what is persistent current current flowing in a conductor superconductor without any opposition and existing indefinitely for infinite time he is known as persistent current and it occurs only in superconductor i have given the example and persistent current exists 
विदाउट हेल्प ऑफ द बैटरी विदाउट द हेल्प ऑफ पावर सप्लाई नो सोर्स ऑफ ईएमएफ इज रिक्वायर्ड जस्ट टू इनिशिएट द करंट वी रिक्वायर द बैटरी वंस द करंट इज एस्टैब्लिश्ड शॉर्ट द एंड्स एंड रिमूव द बैटरी करंट विल कंटिन्यू टू फ्लो फॉरएवर गेट इट सो दिस इज परसिस्टेंट करंट नेक्स्ट थिंग इन सुपरकंडक्टर्स एटम्स मॉलिक्यूल्स एवरीथिंग आर परफेक्टली अरेंज्ड देयर एग्जिस्ट रेगुलरिटी ऑर्डरलीनेस इज वेरी हाई देयरफॉर एंट्रोपी ऑफ द सुपरकंडक्टर इज वेरी वेरी स्मॉल सो एंट्रोपी आई एम टॉकिंग राइट नाउ अबाउट द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ द सुपरकंडक्टर्स जीरो रेजिस्टिविटी एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ एंट्रोपी सॉरी परसिस्टेंट करंट एंड द लो एंट्रोपी एंट्रोपी इज वेरी लेस इन केस ऑफ सुपरकंडक्टर दैट क्लियरली शोस दैट इन सुपरकंडक्टर्स देयर एग्जिस्ट ऑर्डरलीनेस सो मोर द ऑर्डर लेस एंट्रोपी लेस द ऑर्डर मोर एंट्रोपी डिसऑर्डर जास्ती इद्रे एंट्रोपी जास्ती रैंडम आगे इद्रे एंट्रोपी जास्ती ईगा फॉर एग्जांपल न्यू क्लासरूम ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ರ ಟೀಚರ್ ಇನ್ನು ಬಂದಿಲ್ಲ ಟೀಚರ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಯೆಟ್ ಕಮ್ ಸೋ ಯು ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆರ್ ಮೂವಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಅಂಡ್ देयर दैट इज नथिंग बट ಹೈ ಎಂಟ್ರೋಪಿ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಎಂಟರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ವಿಲ್ ಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಟು ಯುವರ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ देयर ಅರೈಸಸ್ ಯೂನಿಫಾರ್ಮಿಟಿ ಆರ್ಡರ್ಲಿನೆಸ್ ಸೋ ಯುವರ್ ಎಂಟ್ರೋಪಿ ಇಸ್ ನೌ ಲೋ ಸೋ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಂಟ್ರೋಪಿ ಸೂಪರ್ ಕಂಡಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಎಂಟ್ರೋಪಿ ಇಸ್ ಲೆಸ್ देयरफॉर ಆಟಮ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯೂಲ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ರೆಗ್ಯುಲರ್ಲಿ ಅರೇಂಜ್ಡ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟಿ ನೌ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಅನದರ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟಿ ಸಿ ಫಾಲೋ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟಿ ಆಲ್ ಸೂಪರ್ ಕಂಡಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಡಯಾಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಡಯಾಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟ್ಸ್ ಕಾನ್ವರ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟ್ರೂ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸೇ ಆಲ್ ಡಯಾಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸೂಪರ್ ಕಂಡಕ್ಟರ್ ಸೋ ಆಲ್ ಸೂಪರ್ ಕಂಡಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಡಯಾಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಡಯಾಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟ್ ಡು ಯು ನೋ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಯಾಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟ್ ಸಿ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟಿಕ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ಸ್ ಡಯಾಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಯಾರಾಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟ್ಸ್ ಫೆರೋಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟ್ಸ್ ಡಯಾಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ಸ್ ವೆನ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಕೆಪ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟರ್ನಲ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಲೋ ದ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಟು ಎಂಟರ್ ಇನ್ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟಿಕ್ ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎಂಟರ್ ಸೋ ದೇ ರಿಪೆಲ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟಿಕ್ ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೊ ಡಯಾಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ನೆವರ್ ಶೋ ಎನಿ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸ್ ದೇ ನೆವರ್ ಅಲೋ ದ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಟು ಎಂಟರ್ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಕೀಪ್ ಪ್ಯಾರಾಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟ್ ದೇ ಅಲೋ ದ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟಿಕ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಟು ಎಂಟರ್ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಕೀಪ್ ಫೆರೋಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟ್ ದೇ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಅಲೋ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟಿಕ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಟು ಎಂಟರ್ ದೇ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ರೀಟೈನ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟಿಕ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸಮ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಕೀಪ್ ಐರನ್ ಪೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟಿಕ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಸೆ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಐರನ್ ಪೀಸ್ ಐ ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಒನ್ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟ್ ನಿಯರ್ ಟು ಇಟ್ ಆರ್ ಐ ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟ್ ಇನ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಐರನ್ ಪೀಸ್ ಲಿವ್ ಇಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎ ವೈಲ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಐರನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವಿಲ್ ಆಕ್ಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಐರನ್ ನಿಯರ್ ಟು ದ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಸೇಫ್ಟಿ ಪಿನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಫೀಸ್ ಪಿನ್ ಗುಂಡ್ ಪಿನ್ ಅಂತಿರಲ್ಲ ಅಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ತಗೊಂಡು ಹೋದ್ರೆ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಪಿಕ್ ಆಲ್ ದೋಸ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಐರನ್ ಪೀಸಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ this iron has taken the magnetic field from the actual magnet this is ferromagnet i hope you studied all these things in puc ferromagnets are the materials which are retaining the magnetic field paramagnets are the materials which just allow the magnetic field diamagnets never allow the magnetic field never retain the magnetic field they in fact show opposition to the magnetic field so all superconductors are therefore diamagnets in nature they never allow the magnetic field to enter in this is one of the important property of the superconductor see in magnetic field just recall from puc we have three parameters namely magnetic field inside the material is equal to mu not that is permeability into intensity of the applied magnetic field plus m m means magnetization in some textbooks they write it as i i think in some in some cases i take it as i also m or i i or m or thing but uh, magnetization intensity of magnetization suppose if i have
right h is equal to minus m that means they show negative magnetization means the dipoles will orient in the opposite direction to the applied magnetic field and we have a parameter called h by m is equal to chi that is called susceptibility and that susceptibility is negative so you can say either superconductors are diamagnets in nature or you can say their susceptibility is negative their magnetic susceptibility is negative okay so this is another property so one more property i would like to mention well i write it here fifth property there are many properties okay critical temperature remember critical temperature is there no this critical temperature by and large it is constant but it so happens that when mass number increases when mass number increases critical temperature decreases do you know what is mass number mass number atomic number all these things you might have studied in puc suppose if i have an element x whatever you write here it is atomic number whatever you write here it is mass number mass number is the total number of protons and neutrons this is just only protons suppose if the elements have same atomic number different mass number like for example one minute i just erase this i have say for example carbon what is the atomic number of carbon it is 6 i can have 11 or i can have 12 or i can have 13 Look at this. Atomic number is same, mass number is different. So they are called isotopes. So when mass number changes. then it is called isotope okay so in superconducting materials it so happens that when mass number changes critical temperature also changes it is found that critical temperature is inversely proportional to square root of the mass number please don't get confused between this cm and this cm this is magnetization this is mass number notation okay so critical temperature is inversely proportional proportional to square root of mass number and this property is also called as isotopic effect isotopic effect i give you some small example mercury for example mercury has a two different forms one is hg199 other one is hg204 okay for 199 it is 4.161 kelvin this is a tc value for this it is 4.124 kelvin look at the values actually there is not much difference 1612 but that small difference itself is very important for physicists see here mass number is 199 mass number is less critical temperature is more mass number is more critical temperature is less this is what i said critical temperature is inversely proportional to square root of the mass number so this is called isotopic effect so like this we have many properties next one more property i would like to mention superconductor will exhibit its property until the temperature reaches the critical value if the temperature is beyond the critical value it will lose its superconductive property and comes to normalcy got it so in case of superconductor critical temperature is the most important point very critical point that is it is called critical temperature or transition temperature and also we know when superconductor is kept in the magnetic field it won't allow the magnetic lines to enter okay actually it was first observed by meissner therefore it is called as meissner effect that i will explain immediately after i finish the properties so now you keep on increasing the magnetic field if you increase the magnetic field continuously at one stage superconductor will surrender to the magnetic field initially superconductor will fight it will fight it will repel the lines but if you keep on increasing the magnetic field at one stage superconductor will lose its fight nature and it will surrender to the magnetic field then magnetic lines start penetrating through the specimen once the lines passes through the specimen it is no more diamagnet when it is no more diamagnet it is no more superconductor so what i mean to say we can spoil the superconducting property we can destroy the superconducting property by applying the magnetic field by increasing the magnetic field at certain external magnetic field
field, superconductor lose its resistivity property, zero resistivity property, superconducting property. The field at which it will lose the property is called critical field. Critical field. See, remember, superconducting property we can spoil either by increasing the temperature or by increasing the magnetic field. Keep magnetic field constant, increase the temperature. Andre, don't apply the magnetic field. You keep on increasing the temperature. Definitely at certain value, it will lose the superconducting property. Or keep the temperature 0 Kelvin only. Below critical value only. Just apply the magnetic field. At certain value, we can spoil the superconducting property. We can destroy the superconducting property. That is called critical field. For example, in case of aluminium, I take just aluminium as an example. If temperature exceeds 1.15 Kelvin, then aluminium is no more a superconductor. It is an ordinary conductor. Now, I don't want to change the temperature. Keep the temperature constant. Now, you increase the magnetic field. Keep on increasing the magnetic field. The moment it becomes 0.01 Tesla, so aluminium will lose its superconducting property. So, aluminium will surrender to the magnetic field at 0 0.01 Tesla or surrender to the temperature at 1.15 Kelvin. So, converts from superconducting to normal conducting forum. So, what I mean to say, superconducting property can be destroyed even by applying the magnetic field also. Okay, sir. If I apply both, means if I increase the magnetic field, if I increase the temperature, what will happen? That means what is the connection between critical field and critical temperature? Just you only think. There are two ways to disturb the superconducting property. One is by raising the temperature. Another one is by increasing the magnetic field. Okay. Suppose if I do both, what will happen? Yes, you are correct. Specimen will lose its superconductivity very quickly, very fast. See, I am increasing the temperature, increasing the field. Before reaching 1.15 only, so aluminum becomes normal. Before reaching 0 0.01 Tesla only, it will become normal. Got it? If you plot magnetic field versus temperature, when temperature is 0, maximum field is required that I call as HC0. When temperature is 0, I need maximum field to spoil the superconductivity. Correct? Now, suppose if I increase the temperature, no, I don't want so much. I need only this much. So, for this temperature, this is the point. Next temperature, this is the point. This is the point. This is the point like that. So, the curve is something like this. Now, by the time you come to Tc, H is 0. That means to spoil the superconductivity, you need not have to apply the magnetic field, just temperature itself will take care of it. Understood? Okay. So, this is the graphical representation of Hc versus Tc and there is a mathematical equation also. H at any temperature is equal to Hc at 0 Kelvin into 1 minus T by Tc whole square. Dear students, you can expect numerical problems only on this equation. So, H at T is equal to HC naught that is at 0 Kelvin value into 1 minus T by Tc whole square. Understood? So, superconductors can be converted into normal conductors just by increasing the magnetic field or by increasing the temperature. So, this is about properties of superconductors. I just repeat superconductors property, zero resistivity persistence current, entropy is very low, they are very good diamagnets, their susceptibility is negative and they have isotopic effect that means the mass number, sorry, critical temperature is inversely proportional to mass number and then uh, superconducting property can be disturbed by applying the magnetic field itself. By raising the magnetic field, we can spoil the superconducting property and the minimum field required for this purpose is called critical field. Like critical temperature, we have a critical field. 
field. Understood? And there is a relation between magnetic field, critical field at zero, critical temperature, and any other temperature. That relation is here. And graphical representation of H versus T, when temperature is zero, H is maximum. When H is zero, temperature is maximum. So, below this curve, you take any point, it is superconducting state. Above this, you take any point, it is normal conducting state. So, dear students, here onwards, if I write NC, treat it as normal conducting. SC, treat it as superconducting. I hope you are following, no? Now, let us, with all these things, let us proceed to the next one called Meissner effect. What is Meissner effect? I already told you while explaining this point, it comes now. Meissner was doing the, this diamagnetic property actually was discovered by Meissner. It was not discovered by Kemmerling or Nesta. Meissner was doing experiment on superconductor. He kept the superconductor in external magnetic field. In external magnetic field, when temperature greater than critical temperature, when temperature greater than critical temperature, he kept the superconductor in the external magnetic field. See, these are the magnetic lines of force. Okay, so magnetic lines they simply enter into the specimen when temperature is above the critical value. Then he what he did, you know, he reduced the temperature below critical value. When he did like this, when he reduced the temperature below critical value. So, this uh, normal piece, sorry, superconducting piece converted into, earlier it was in the normal forum, converted into superconducting forum. You know what happened? These magnetic lines, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 lines are there. So, first line slightly deviated. Second line deviated more. See, third line is inside the conductor. But that line is now thrown out of the conductor. Fourth one is inside the conductor. Thrown out of the conductor. Fifth one repelled. Sixth one repelled. Look at this. That means superconductor is expanding filling all the magnetic lines of force which were there inside it when when the temperature is below critical value this is known as meissner effect and from meissner effect we can say superconductors are diamagnets i repeat what is meissner effect meissner effect and explain maadi with diagram keltare this is a very important question explains with suitable diagrams meissner effect what is the conclusion something like that According to Meissner, when a superconducting piece is immersed in the, or kept in the, or placed in the external magnetic field, it will allow all the magnetic lines to pass through when temperature is greater than Tc. When you say temperature is greater than Tc, it is normal conducting forum. If now the temperature is reduced to below critical value, that means if it is now converted into superconductor, that superconductor will expel all the lines of force as shown in figure. This is known as Meissner effect. Once again I write, I state, when the superconductor is immersed in the magnetic field and temperature is above the critical value, it will allow all the magnetic lines to pass through. When the temperature is reduced below critical value, then superconductor will throw all the lines from it. This shows that superconductor is a very good diamagnet. Understood? So this is Meissner effect. One thing you must notice here, so you can connect these two. Remember this happens, Meissner effect happens only when the temperature is below critical value, below, below critical value. Not only that, you have to keep in mind, applied magnetic field is below critical value. I told you, you no know, superconducting property can be spoiled even by magnetic field also. Kadame magnetic field apply madire tundre illa. Suppose if you apply higher magnetic field, as I told earlier, superconducting piece will surrender, soth budute, magnetic field alna wadagade bitcom budute. It will allow the lines to enter in. That means, while stating the Meissner effect, essentially you have to mention this condition. Enanta, if the superconductor is placed in the external magnetic field, bracketally H less than HC, that's enough. And temperature is reduced below critical value, then all the magnetic lines are expelled from the specimen. This is known as super, uh, Meissner effect. So, bracketally H less than HC, and re, Meissner effect holds good only below the critical value, not above the critical value. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Now, I hope you are following. Do one thing. 
Now you take a superconducting piece, a piece of aluminium, put one wire around it, let us say copper wire, wind copper wire, connect the copper wire to battery and pass the current. You know when you pass current in a wire, current in a coil, when you pass current in a coil, in PUC you studied, centrally magnetic field produced. Agate. Thus produced magnetic field is mu naught Ni divided by 2 pi R. You derive this using biot Savart law in PUC. Okay. Suppose if I put aluminium piece inside, aluminium piece inside and keep on increasing the current. When you increase the current, even though temperature is less than Tc, at certain value, this aluminium will lose its superconducting property. That means, at certain critical current value, B becomes sufficient, or H becomes sufficient. B and H are almost the same. Only difference is, B is equal to mu naught into H, that's all. Okay. So, you take mu naught here, that means, uh, okay, I write it as B by mu naught, that is equal to so, Nic divided by 2 pi r, this is my h. h is equal to Nic divided by 2 pi r, where r is the radius of this coil and aluminium piece is inside the coil and n is number of turns in the coil and Ic is the current in the coil. Suppose if Ic is sufficient to spoil the superconductivity, then I call this as critical current. See, so many critical values. Critical critical temperature, critical field, critical current. Okay, critical temperature is Tc, critical field is Hc, critical current is Ic. Critical temperature is the maximum temperature up to which the substance can exist in a superconducting form. Critical field is the minimum external magnetic field required to spoil the superconducting property. Critical current is the maximum current required to spoil the superconducting property. Or current in the coil which is sufficient to spoil the superconducting property. E tara bartha hogute. Okay, dear students, I stop this video here. In this video, I explain properties of superconductor and Meissner effect. Also, one famous equation, very important equation, important from the point of numericals and also relation between H versus T graphical representation. Presentation. Well, in my next class, I come back to you with the types of superconductors, type 1, type 2 superconductors, afterwards BCS theory. After that, I will take up what is called squid, the Josephson effect, etc, etc. I hope I can complete this module, sorry, this particular chapter in 4 to 5 videos, another 4 to 5 videos, excluding the first one, okay. So, please stay with me, like my videos, share with your friends, pass your comments and also subscribe so that I can make more and more videos with your support. Okay. Thank you, dear students. Thank you very much.